While we're on the topic of Black Lives Matter, I would like to say that Black Trans Lives Matter. I would like for each and every one of you when you go home today or on your phone right now to Google TT Gully. She is a black trans woman who was murdered at the hands of the police. We are about 10,000 signatures short from her petition to reopen her case, which is closed right now, so we need to reopen that. So Google TT Gully, let's reopen her case and bring justice to her. Black Trans Lives Matter. Okay. You can't say abolish the police without there being a direct correlation to call for the abolition of ICE. I want to talk to you guys about what's happening at the U.S.-Mexico border right now. Right now. Right now, as we are speaking, as we are gathered here right now in this very moment. There are makeshift refugee camps in a town called Matamoros in Mexico, which is three kilometers away from Brownsville, Texas. Three kilometers away from American soil, which is stolen land. Yeah. 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 These makeshift refugee camps are in some of the most abysmal and dangerous conditions imaginable. There are five porter potties for 2,500 people. There are five. Needless to say, these are filled within hours and it is leaving people to have to go to the forest that is in the surrounding area to use the bathroom there. And whenever it is, it rains, it washes down and people are getting sick. The Rio Grande in which they bathe is dirty and they are getting gastrointestinal infections and pink eye. There is no running water. There is no government assistance. The only relief work being done there is done by volunteers. There aren't any people keeping track of who comes in and who comes out of these makeshift refugee camps. If anyone goes missing, there is no record of them. And those that do go missing are often kidnapped by drug cartels that are then held for ransom. If y'all didn't know, the undocumented folk that are trying to cross the US America board the US Mexico border don't have any money they don't have any resources and they're being taken and murdered and tortured by the cartel and no one is doing anything to stop it this is all happening at this country's doorstep thanks to the president's remain in Mexico policy which is an unlawful policy that was implemented in January 2019 this means that asylum seekers that arrive at the port of entry of the U.S.-Mexico border will be sent back to Mexico to weigh out the duration of their U.S. immigration proceeding, whether they are from Mexico or not. Undocumented folks that are traveling from Central and South America are being sent back to a country that is not their own, with no resources and with no other choice but to wait it out at the before-mentioned camps. This didn't used to be the case. People that were trying to migrate into the US would be able to go up to the border and speak to an asylum officer. That would then lead to what is called a credible fear screening. And if you pass the credible fear screening, you were granted asylum into the United States and you would be able to wait out your immigration proceedings in America. Along with the Remain in Mexico policy, the president also changed what it is to be an asylum officer. People used to be able to speak openly and candidly about their fears of returning to a country where they are not safe. Migrant Protection Protocol, or MPP, is a new system that is in place, again, as of 2019, implemented by the piece of shit president. Fuck Trump! Yes. Fuck Trump! Yes. Fuck Trump! This new um, system is making it so that asylum officers have to conduct intense six hour long interviews, and those that are being interviewed have to provide proof 
that their safety will be jeopardized if they were to go back to the country that they came from. Undocumented folks also have to say a very specific magic set of words in order for the, the officers to grant them asylum. They have to specify that they are threatened because of their nationality or because they belong to a marginalized group of people or that their government cannot provide them with safety. Those who are trying to migrate don't know this. They don't know that you need to have proof. How do you have proof that you are in danger? How do you have proof that you are being abused, that you are being prosecuted by your government, that you are not safe in your country, that your family is living through war tax? Do any of you know what war tax is? No! Let them know! War tax is something that the cartel, specifically in Mexico and Central America, enact in communities where they go and they fearmonger small locally owned businesses and demand that they pay a war tax so that they don't come and uproot their lives. And every month, every year, that war tax increases and gets higher and higher and higher. And people eventually aren't able to pay it. And when that happens, a lot of the time, the cartel will go to their house, will go to their place of business and terrorize them and their families to the point where they are no longer safe in their country, in their home, and they need to leave. They need to seek asylum in what is painted as a beautiful American dream. But we all know that's some shit. These people that want a better life for themselves often leave with nothing but the clothes on their backs and the very little money and documentation that they have that might grant them asylum into this country. How on earth are they expected to carry proof of their abuse? Is the desperation of needing to cross the border knowing the risk of being detained by ICE not enough? Is that not enough? What would that proof even look like? I, as of today, there are 4,700 open MPP cases. 4,700 MPP cases that are open. 3,700 of which are pending. And of those 4,700 cases, 11 people have been granted asylum. 11 people. This is not okay. This has never been okay. And now is not the time for us to slow down. Now is not the time for us to become complacent. Right. I know. <laughs> this movement this civil rights movement that we're living through right now was not made to distract us, to keep us entertained, to give us something to do during a pandemic. This is real work that would need to be done regardless of whether or not we have free time on our hands. This is work that needs to continue to happen every day. We need to continue to show up. We need to continue to fight our oppressors. I know that things are opening back up and I know that we are seeing small amounts of police reform around the country, but it is not enough. Breonna Taylor's murderers still have not been arrested. Now is not the time to stop fighting, you guys. We have to keep coming to the Justice Center. We have to keep showing up and fighting for black lives, fighting for those who have been wrongfully imprisoned by ICE for wanting a better life for themselves. Thank you for listening to me today and thank you for coming out and letting this dialogue happen. Protect black lives, protect kids that are being detained by ICE, free everyone that's being detained by ICE. That's it, that's it, that's all I have.